guest is a former monk and award-winning podcast host and beloved New York Times best-selling author. He's changed the way millions of people live their lives. Here with his newest book, Eight Rules of Love, please welcome Jay Shetty. Thank you so much for being here. Oh, I am so grateful to be here. Thank you for having me. We're so happy to have you. Can you sense it in the energy? I love it. It's amazing. Thank you, man. Thank, Thank you so you. much. Okay, so you have a very interesting life. You was a monk for three years. Yes. How did you get involved with that? Oh, so I used to go and hear entrepreneurs, athletes, people speak. This mm -hmm. is before podcasts, before YouTube. And I heard a monk speak. And I was 18 years old and I was blown away and I said, I want to learn what he has. I realized that I'd met people who were beautiful, I'd met people who were strong and powerful. But when I was 18, when I met him, I finally found someone who was happy. And I thought to myself, I want what he has. And so I went and followed him and spent time with him. And then he became a teacher of mine. And I ended up spending three years in a monastery. Oh, wow. That is amazing. <laughs> what is a day in the life of a monk like? What? Okay. So you, you, no one has to do this, by the way. So you wake up at 4 a.m. Mm -hmm. And then you meditate for about four to eight hours a day. Uh, all your possessions fit inside a gym locker. Everything you own. You sleep on the floor. You don't have a place that's yours. You just sleep in any space that you can find. Uh, it's, and then you spend the rest of the day doing service. So you go out and feed the homeless, you go and feed children, you're going out and trying to be of service That's to society. Beautiful. It's really beautiful, it's really special. That is amazing. Wow, and you're married. How did you meet your wife? <laughs> okay, this is, this is an interesting story. So my wife and I met actually through, this is six months of my last year of college. I was, I knew in my mind I was gonna become a monk. So I'd spend my weekends at my local temple trying to stay out of trouble. And one day this lady came, my mother's age, and I was asked to show her around mm -hmm. and how to do certain services. I'd never met her before. I'd never had to do this again. I showed her around and she said, hey, I have a young daughter who I'd love to introduce to spirituality and meditation. And I said to her, well, I'm gonna be a monk in six months, so I'll introduce her to my sister. I didn't realize at this point I'd met my future wife's so mom. Didn't know. Okay. This was a mom that I'd just met. Wow. And then four years later, when I came back from the monastery, my wife and my sister had become really good friends. And so my sister was our, our wing person. She was the person who, who hooked us up. So that's, that that's how we met. I love that. Talk about your new book, Eight Rules of Love. Why did you want to write it? I just really feel like love is so critical to the quality of our lives. And mm -hmm. I feel like so many of us are single and looking for love. So many people are in relationships and they've lost the spark. So many people have just broken up or had a divorce and they want to refine love within themselves. So I just felt that we've talked a lot about physical health, we've talked a lot about mental health, but I don't think we've talked about relationship health enough. And so I wanted to put a spotlight on that. Mm, okay. And yes. <laughs> How do you define love? So, I feel like love is one of these interesting words to define because everyone has their own definition and I think you should define it. It's not just a feeling or an emotion. My definition is that it's when you know someone's personality. Do you know what they're like when they get tired? Do you know what they're like when they get irritated? Do you know what they're like when they're having a bad day? If you know that, that's one step. The second is, do you respect their values? Mm -hmm. Most of the time in relationships, we want our partner to value what we value. We want them to like what we like. But actually, relationships are about respecting their values. And the third one is, are you committed to help them achieve their goals? Mm. Do you want to see them rise to their potential? Do you want to support them? And do you want to help them become the best version of themselves? Those are the three parts of my definition of love. Y'all got that? <laughs> I was listening very closely. OK. We, oh, we got some good stuff. So we put a lot of importance on romantic love. Should we do that? So. I think that we've put romantic love on a pedestal, and I think we've forgotten to realize that there's so many other beautiful relationships. The relationship you have with your mother, the relationship you have with your children, the relationship you have with your, your brother, your best friend, your sibling, whatever it may be. And I feel like if I ask someone to compare the love they have for their child to the love they have for their partner, you'd say that's ridiculous, it's just different. Mm -hmm. But I know so many people who have beautiful relationship with their kids, but because society makes them feel inadequate because they don't have a partner in their life. And so I actually think we need to celebrate all these other forms of love. And in the tradition that I studied as a monk, it talks about how the closest thing to pure love is a mother's love for their child. Mm. And so I think we need to celebrate that more, uh, put more spotlight on that.
Okay, on our show, we talk about deal breakers a lot. What do you think, like, about red flags when you meet someone? Oh, uh, there's, there's quite a few red flags. One of the first ones is when someone says, I love you too soon. Mm. So studies show that women say it after about three months, men say it about in a month, like within a month. And so hearing the words, I love you that early on, it's like this person doesn't even know you, let alone right. love you. And so I think that's a red flag. The other two that came out in some of my research was the halo effect. So the halo effect is when you like one thing about someone, mm. but you assume that means they have lots of other good qualities. So if someone went to a good school, you think they must be organized. Right. Or you think, well, if someone has a good job, then they must be a good person, right? So we start giving people these qualities. And the third and final one that's really interesting is called the context effect. What that means is, let's say you just walked out of a romantic comedy at the theaters. Mm. You're more likely to believe, research shows, that someone you bump into is gonna be a likely partner. Or if you bump into someone at a wedding, you think that's the person you're meant to be with because you just were surrounded by love. It even goes to the point of if you have a warm drink together, like a coffee, you're more likely to have warmer feelings towards the what? person you're sitting with. So you gotta be really careful, have a cold drink, then you know if you real, <laughs> really have feelings <laughs> with this person. <laughs> that was really good. I was listening very close. Okay, so you're currently on your first world tour. Congratulations. Yes, thank you. Thank Love you. rules, tell us about it. So I'm going on a world tour. It's a 90 minute special interactive experience where I'll be coming into the audience. Audience is gonna come on stage. There's games, there's prizes. It's like a full on interactive experience. I can't wait for everyone to come. Nice, that yeah. sounds amazing. If you like this video, smash that like button and subscribe to the Jennifer Hudson Show YouTube channel. Check your local listings or visit jenniferhudsonshow.com to see when you can watch four episodes in your area. And don't forget to sign up for the newsletter.